will now see reflection of light by different surfaces this is the chapter first of all let us try to understand what is light light is a form of energy that gives us the sensation of vision okay so earlier we have studied about light traveling in straight lines forming shadows you just let us try to recollect the similar concepts okay so basically light is a form of energy that gives us the sensation of vision this we all know the foremost important property of light is it will travel in straight line okay whenever we use the word light being a form of energy we mostly use the word propagate light propagates okay light propagates in straight lines or light travels in straight lines so that is one of the important property of light the question is now why does light travel in straight lines is there any principle behind it light being a form of energy and energy always propagates in straight lines because straight line path is the least path which can be traveled the path followed by energy to propagate from one point to another point is the least mi minimum path it is the least path along which it travels so this is propounded by a scientist called fermat it is according to the fermat's principle that light always travels in straight lines it is based on this property that we will be able to know about shadows and shadows are formed because light is obstructed by opaque objects with regards to light when light is incident on a body okay three things can happen the body can allow the light to pass through it or it can bounce back into the same medium or it can absorb and it can transmit all these are the possibilities when light is incident on a surface or any body okay so what happens when light is bounced back this bouncing back of light into the same medium through which it is incident on the object or the body is called reflection okay and if it is not bounced back it is either transmitted through it or it is absorbed by the body clear so when with regards to the propagation of light through a body with regards to that we have three types of bodies one is transparent second is translucent third is opaque so three categories of the bodies we have transparent bodies are the bodies which will allow 100% of the incident light to pass through it okay for example a plain glass a clear plain glass okay or a clear thin foil glass foil what will happen is whatever the light is incident on it it will allow all the light to pass through it 100% of the light is passed through it that is the nature of a transparent body in case of a translucent body what will happen or a translucent material what does it do it will allow the light to pass through it but only 
partially. So it will not allow 100% of the light to pass through it. So only a part of the light is passed through it. Okay. So that is the nature of a translucent material or a translucent body. Right. If a body does not allow any of the light to pass through it, then that body you will call it as opaque body. It is these opaque bodies which cast shadows. Okay. So the, on the other hand, the opaque bodies what they do, do is either they absorb the light which is incident on them or they will bounce back the light into the same medium on which it is through which it is traveling. Okay. Now, so it is because of these opaque bodies and the rectilinear propagation of light, the nature of it, because of this we will have a concept of shadow. Right? Shadow is nothing but a dark patch of light, sorry, a dark patch which is found behind an opaque object because of the obstruction of light by the body, by the object. Okay. Now, if I have a source of light here, S is the source of light. When I am putting it as a point, one simple point, I will call it as a point source of light. If it is not a single point, if it is a bigger one, right, we will call it as an extended source of light. So, assuming that it is a point source of light, light will travel in all possible directions in the form of rays, light rays. If at all I have an opaque object, an opaque object is there in between. So what will happen is the light will pass in all directions but this opaque object is not allowing the light to pass through it. So this portion is light lit whereas this portion is dark. So no light is absorbed in this area. Okay. Now if at all I have a screen, it is a screen. So then what will happen is the light will travel straight on this say this is the area PQ, beyond Q above this and below Q beyond this particular point P, beyond these two points we will be able to see the light but the light is obstructed in this region P to Q by this opaque object from the source, point source. So this region on the screen P to Q is nothing but the shadow of the opaque object whatever you have clear. So, it is because of this opaque nature or uh, it is because of the electrical propagation of light that shadows are formed and this is the basic concept involved in eclipse formation. Either it is a solar eclipse or the lunar eclipse. Okay. For a shadow to be formed, we need three objects. One is the source of light. It can be an, a point source or an external source of light an opaque object and a screen. These three are compulsory to observe a shadow. In case you do not have the screen over here, you do not have the chance to observe the shadow of the body. In case source and screen are there but this opaque object is not there, then you will not be able to observe the shadow. Okay. Now based on this shadow formation, we have the eclipse formation also. We have two kinds of eclipses, solar eclipse and lunar eclipse. Okay. Lunar eclipse means the moon is obstructed by the earth. Okay. So, you will not be able to see the moon. So, in that case, in the lunar eclipse, the sun is a source of the light. We have the sun here and we have the moon over here. Okay. Moon is a screen 
and earth is in between earth is in between the sun and the moon so the shadow of the earth is formed on the moon which is a screen so people which are facing the moon obviously those people will be on the night side because they are away from the sun they will be observing the shadow of the moon okay shadow shadow of the earth on the moon so you will not be able to see the moon over there there is a lunar eclipse okay on the other hand we have the solar eclipse for the solar eclipse still you have the sun as a source of energy but moon comes in the path of the light between the sun and the earth so here this is solar eclipse this is lunar eclipse okay so earth comes sorry moon comes in the path of the sun and the earth shadow of the moon is absorbed on the earth so people who are falling under the shadow of the moon on the earth they will not be able to see the sun and that is what you call solar eclipse moon is obstructing the sun from visibility clear so it is this little near propagation of light or light travels in straight lines which is causing this phenomenon clear